right, good evening, everybody. Uh, let's have every candidate please start with your two-minute introduction. Mr. Carnes, you'll go first. Thank you. Good evening, Michigan City. Thank you to the Women League of Voters for being here. Glad to be here to talk to you tonight. I have come from over 40 years of being in leadership under my father. I've been also a pastor for over 10 years, and I learned how to be a leader. I learned how to serve people. And if you give me your vote on November the 5th, I'm going to guarantee you that you will no longer have to deal with cosmetic leadership. What I mean by cosmetic leadership, it's easy to do statistics, it's easy to talk about art space, it's easy to talk about these things, but these are just cosmetics. There are some serious problems in Michigan City that we need to deal with. And as your mayor, I will deal with those things. Yes, a lot of things are uncomfortable, but we have to deal with them. We have to talk about those things because those are the things that are going to catapult us to everything else. But until we deal with these things, until we go into those areas, we got to talk about racism. Racism still is alive and well in Michigan City. I know it's uncomfortable. A lot of people don't want to deal with it, but we have to deal with it. Homelessness. We have 70, 75 percent retail. What kind of jobs are those? What kind of lives are people getting from that? We have to deal with these things. It's uncomfortable, but you have to deal with it. And as your mayor, as your leader, I will deal with these things and bring these things to the forefront. And I thank you for that. Thank you. Mr. Mayor. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, I would like to start out by saying I am Mayor Ron Mayer, and I've been your mayor for the last eight years. I have uh, 28 years of municipal experience combined. Um, I'd like to ta also start out by saying that uh, over the last eight years as your mayor, there has been $1.5 billion of investment in the city of Michigan City and our region. That's very important as we talk about the confidence people have in what's happening. Many communities would just love to have that type of investment. Every major employer in Michigan City and many small businesses and throughout LaPorte City and LaPorte County are hiring right now, are looking for employees and are hiring new employees. The steel mills are hiring. Our region is doing exceptionally well. There has been over $60 million in sidewalk, street, storm water, sewer water, uh, sanitary sewer improvements throughout Michigan City over the last eight years. We have addressed the environment. There's been a complete 360 in where the environment is being protected in the city of Michigan City now compared to where we were nine, ten years ago. The leadership, there is great leadership already in Michigan City. We, we, people will talk about leadership, leadership. When they were, had an opportunity to be in a leadership role, for, for instance, said they were still learning on the Redevelopment Commission, still trying to find their way after two years. I'd say there was no leadership there, and that's probably why the City Council replaced a certain individual. But anyway, uh, great investment in our city. We have work training that is occurring. You have to take advantage of those opportunities. The Ivy Tech, the A.K. Smith Center, which is for adults and for uh, high school students. So great programs and uh, great progression in the city of Michigan City. Thank you. Mr. Perry? I'm Dwayne Perry, the right choice for mayor of Michigan City. <clears throat> As your mayor, I will lead Michigan City into a great future with my five-step plan for prosperity. Step number one, I will reduce our city's debt by stopping this administration's excessive spending, dissolving the Redevelopment Commission, and ending the TIF program, which will lower our property taxes. Our city is over $65 million in debt, yet we give away millions to big corporations like Blue Chip. If we don't stop this, the debt will be carried on to our grandchildren, destroying their future. <clears throat> I will spend $10 million of riverboat money on the people of Michigan City, on youth activities, more amenities for senior citizens, including helping with property taxes, good neighborhood streets, sidewalks, and lighting, a scholarship plan that gives more and addresses trade schools and apprenticeships, assistance to our veterans with job training and placement, home ownership, and of course health care, and for our young families, all the Summerfest events that have been eliminated by our mayor. Step three, 
I will reduce crime and improve relations between Michigan Cityans and our police department by creating a citizens review board to oversee police activities, replacing the police chief with a civilian and activating neighborhood watches. Step four, I will spend more money bringing jobs to Michigan City than bringing tourists here. I will enforce our hiring ordinance, holding monthly job fairs, connecting employers with workers, and provide more small business grants. And step five, I will listen to you, the people of Michigan City, at my monthly Mayor for a Minute coffee, where everyone will have time to say what they would do as mayor. Our government cares more about tourism than good jobs and quality of life. The time for change is now. I've served in the armed forces as city council president and managed construction companies. Please vote for me November 5th. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And then we have Mr. LaRocco, please. I, thank, thank you. Uh, I'm a retired firefighter business owner for 40 years. Been involved in local communications and radio since the 1970s. What we need to do is give Michigan City back to the citizens of Michigan City. What we need to do, the mayor needs to work with the city council and the residents of the wards, and together, by having meetings, we can find out what their concerns are and address it with the city council and move it to the proper department head for resolution. We need to cut wasteful spending. You know, the next mayor, nobody wants to talk about it. The next mayor is going to be in a bind. We have that double track system that's been bonded already. It's not going to start for another year or six months. Or it's not going to be complete for four more years. So we have to watch how we spend our money. We just can't spend our money, riverboat money, riverboat money. You go to council meeting, we'll take it out of riverboat money. It's got to stop. What's going to happen to the next administration when the cost goes up? I don't know anybody in here. Anybody in this room, can you tell me any government program that finished on time and under budget? It's not going to happen. So we got to be proactive. Somebody mentioned the Marquette Mall a little earlier. I wasn't going to, t wasn't going to talk on that. But what we need to do is be proactive with the Marquette Mall situation, and you reach out to those people today and try to solve the problem today at $2019 and not wait five or ten years when it costs you four or five times more. And we need to return to neighborhood patrolling. You know, uh, I have that complaint. Neighborhoods feel that they're, you know, we want to talk about all this investment. Neighborhoods have been neglected. When the mayor ran eight years ago, he said he was going to take care of the, mayor, uh, the neighborhoods, and he certainly has, three of them. Thank you. Mm. <laughs> All right, thank you. Um, we're going to continue with you, Mr. Locko. Here's your question. What do you see as the most significant thing that can be done to keep young people, millennium, millennials and Generation Z, from leaving the city instead of, invest, instead of investing in our community? Okay, the first thing you need to do is you need to let them get involved in government. You know, when I was growing up, they wouldn't let you get involved. We need to get our young people involved. We need to put them on boards. We need to let them get involved in government. The more you get them involved, the more they'll stay here. The other thing is, it's ludicrous that 70-year-old men and women are going to tell youngsters what they need to have fun. When you want to have a youth project, you need to let the youth take part in the planning of the process. We cannot have 70-year-old men like me telling a young man like Mr. Patrick how they're going to have fun. Thank you. We'll have the same question for you, Mr. Perry. What do you see as the most significant thing that can be done to keep young people, millennials, Generation Z, from leaving the city instead of investing in our community? We need to engage the young people and make them stakeholders in the community. The way I see to do that is to, by bringing better jobs and higher wages. If someone's making more money, we ha that's disposable money. It goes back into the economy. It gives them more money to upgrade their living, to upgrade their assets, a car, and it, it will get them involved. They'll start to care more because they have a better life. Thank you. All right. Um, I'll, I'll continue the same question with Mr. Muir. What do you see as the most important, significant thing that can be done to keep young people, millennials, Generation Z, from leaving the city instead of investing in our community? Well, a lot of exactly what we're already doing here in, the, in Michigan City Fires Progression. As you've just <laughs> seen, uh, Mits, Mitsubishi, 
uh, uh, I mean, rather, Hitachi Solaire, Hitachi Solaire expanding, uh, $30 million expansion with 30 to 40 more jobs. If we can have opportunities, uh, a criterion catalyst with an expansion uh, was discussed at a recent city council meeting. Their average wage is $25 an hour. That's the wage. That's not all the benefits that go along with that. So the more we can expand existing companies and have new companies come in, like Marbach, uh, um, a German company, that offer opportunities for when our students do leave, uh, that they come back and there's good paying jobs here in Michigan City. Also, the double tracking opportunity allows them to live here, be in the downtown Chicago for the great uh, uh, job opportunities that are in Chicago or anywhere in between there, Hammond, uh, East Chicago, Gary. Uh, so that's uh, what we need to do is to continue to work regionally uh, on job creation. Thank you. And Mr. Carnes? What do you see as the most significant thing that can be done to keep young people, millennials, and Generation Z from leaving the city instead of investing in our community? Uh, I'm very excited about working with young people. I have over 28 years of experience working with young people, working in residential facilities. I've worked in both school systems, LaPorte and Michigan City. I worked for LaPorte County Juvenile Services System for over 16 years. I know young people and I understand them. And it's no disrespect to any of these gentlemen that are running for mayor, but being a younger man is important, and it, you can use that because I can be accessible to these young people. I'm going to go to these young people, talk with them. You know what the biggest thing is about our young people is that a lot of times we go to them to dictate to them what they need to do. They just want to be heard. And that's what I want to be as a mayor, as a young man, to go into the schools, go to probation, go into these areas and be a listener and talk to these young people and let, let them let me know what they desire and what they need to have done. Thank you. We're going to continue with Mr. Carnes. What are your plans, if elected mayor, to work with the council to start projects in each ward? So what are the different ward projects that you would do? Our, our, and everybody has said it, our, our neighborhoods are in neglect, and I want to work with the council very close. Uh, instead of using that money downtown for a plaza, let's take that money and let's put it into our neighborhoods. I have been in the neighborhoods, actually got out of my car and walked the neighborhoods and seen what is in our neighborhoods. And the people are taking care of their properties, but there needs some help. Uh, a lot of people tell me, hey, you know, there's crimes being committed, but we need lights. We can't see anything. So I want to work with the council so that we can get our neighborhoods. Let's turn our neighborhoods into plazas. Thank you. Mayor Mir, same well, thing. What are your plans, if elected mayor, to work with the council to start projects in each ward? Well, over the last eight years, like I said, there's been $70 million worth of projects. Uh, uh, one of the things that wasn't mentioned is that there's budgetary uh, constraints that you can only spend so much money each year no matter how much you want to do. And there has been a lot of work done in the neighborhoods. There's been lift stations and sewer, uh, storm sewer projects, $10 million, $11 million just on the south side last year. Uh, and, and we're still continuing to work there. So there's been projects all over the city. Can you always find more work to be done? Absolutely. But you have budget constraints. In regards, I would think that uh, Mr. Carnes would know that Redevelopment Commission dollars have restrictions. You can't just stick those in any neighborhood. They have to fall within the TIF district in order to utilize those. Okay, Mr. Perry, same question. What Thank are your you. plans if elected mayor to work with the council to start projects in each ward? Well, I will communicate with the council much more than the current mayor did between the years 2012 and 16 when I was on the council. That council had virtually no communication with the mayor. Now, I feel that each entity, the mayor and the council, if they do what they're supposed to do, the council being the fiscal budget keepers and the mayor being the person that brings it on board, they do their job, it'll happen. I've already looked at establishing supermarkets, and drugstores on both the east side and the west side, which need them. It's not hard to do. I just looked on the internet, located over 30 pharmaceutical companies, small, and 30 drug store, or grocery store companies. And if you clump parcels together, you can bring them in cost effectively and you can do this. And, and then you meet with the council, but you keep the council informed. Thank you. Mr. Laraco, what are your plans, if elected mayor, to work with the council to start projects in each ward? 
I'm glad that question came up because I didn't get to finish with that two minutes that I had. What you need to do is you need to work with the city council every step of the way. You have to have meetings in the wards, find out what the concerns are with the ward representative. The ward representative goes with the mayor. We go out and we tour the neighborhoods. We make a punch list of the things that are wrong. And you bring them back. And you say, hey, we have the money to do this. We have the money to do this. Let's do this. It's going to be a, a painstaking thing. But in order to make changes in the community, you have to get the community involved. And people have to have a mayor that they can have confidence that they can talk to. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. This is a question we're going to start off at this end again. So, Mr. LaRocco, do you think there has been enough environmental restoration and greenhouse projects over the years? And what is your plan to protect our environment? Well, the environment is definitely an important thing, but we still have accidents happening in Michigan City. I don't know what town the mayor lives, and we just had something this last summer that went unreported for a few days. Uh, something with the South Shore and some diesel fuel. So we need to be diligent. You know, the sanitary district does the best they can do. If the citizens are out somewhere and they see something, it's their job to report it. You know, the city is everyone. It's not the mayor. It's every citizen in Michigan City. And every citizen in Michigan City has a responsibility to make the community better. Thank you. Same question, Mr. Perry. Do you think there's been enough environmental restoration and greenhouse projects over the, sit over the years? And what is your plan to protect our environment? Well, I don't think there's been quite enough uh, greenhouse projects. I think we have enough green space what Michigan City, in my opinion, needs is light, clean industry, which is what I'm going to bring to, to town. That will bring jobs, that will bring higher wages, which will solve a lot of our problems. Unfortunately, green space doesn't pay property taxes, so we need jobs here. I was disappointed when uh, NIPSCO built their, their precipitator on lakefront because it obstructed our view. But from the point of view of boaters, it was critical to the to our docks continuing to thrive because we were getting so many emissions before the precipitators that we were losing customers. So, no, I think we need a few more uh, improvements environmentally. Thank you. Mayor Meir, do you think there's been enough environmental restoration and greenhouse projects over the years, and what is your plan to protect our environment? Well, first off, there's never enough commitment to the environment. Uh, second of all, if Jim can't even answer the question of where the mayor lives in which city, that, that's, a, that's a sign right there. Uh, and then in regards to Councilman or former Councilman Perry's uh, comments about not one time as the Fifth Ward representative did he ever have a request to me to do something in the Fifth Ward. I would say that my administration has done more for the environment in 50 year, than the 50 previous years here in Michigan City. Michael Cuss in the Michigan City Sanitary District, we've done green infrastructure, but it's also a lot of turning around the Michigan City Sanitary District, which was under a federal consent order back in 2010, and, and that's no longer. We're actually now uh, a, a bright spot in the state as far as uh, commitment to environment. Thank you. Mr. Carnes, the same question. Do you think there has been enough environmental restoration and greenhouse projects over the years, and what is your plan to protect our environment? It's like I said before, all this is, this is cosmetics. Um, we have a serious issue with our environment, with our people, with our residents. We have a, we have a, a police problem that we have to deal with. Let's deal with that first. We need an, a police uh, reform review board from our citizens. We have murders that are unsolved. So how can we plant trees? And, and not deal with that first. Let's deal with the environment that we live in and that our residents are living in so that they can trust. We have a $27, 000, uh, $27 million police facility, but we have a $5 relationship with the police. We gotta fix that first before we do anything with the environment. Okay, thank you. Our next, next set of questions are individual ones. So there's a different question for each candidate. And forgive me, I have not pre-read these, so I hope I can read the handwriting. Uh, Mr. Carnes, 
What action will you take as mayor in putting the closed factories back into operation or demolished for redevelopment similar to Laporte? Say, say that one more time. What action will you take as mayor in putting the closed factories back into operation or demolished for redevelopment similar to Laporte? Well, that's, that's going to take a team effort, a collaboration between myself and the council, and we're going to have to look at what is out there, what we can bring to Michigan City that's going to help Michigan City. We also have to think about automation that is, that is soon to come, that is taking away uh, factories uh, more and more. We have to look at that and be proactive with that. Um, that's just going to that's going to be a combined effort between myself and the, and the council and other people that we can bring in, so that we can really bring something that's going to help our residents and bring living wages to this city. Because the one thing we don't want to do is bring something to this city that's that's going to hinder us or hurt us. And it's going to push us back. Okay. This next question is for Mr. Meir. After two terms in office, what has been your greatest shortcoming or what do you regret not being able to accomplish? Well, I would uh, say that uh, getting the uh, residents of Michigan City in a position uh, for, uh, with the job training opportunities uh, and the investment that is coming into our city, uh, when you talk about all the private investment, is getting uh, uh, our, our citizens prepared for that. There's opportunity out there like never before in the history of Michigan City. But opportunity is something that you have to go get, and you have to take the initiative and get it and, and utilize it. Job training, schooling, scholarship opportunities, and jobs that are open job market, lowest unemployment in 20 years in Michigan City and LaPorte County. So uh, that's an accomplishment there, to, to accomplishment right there to, to be able to have job opportunities for our citizens. Thank you. Dwayne Perry. If elected as mayor, how can you build on your accomplishments during your, your term on city council, and what was your best accomplishment then? Well, I would have to say my best accomplishment on the city when I was on the city council was the two years that I was the chairman of the finance committee, uh, reducing the budget, and also during that time in contract negotiations with the police and fire department, not having any contract cost es escalations. Uh, what was the other part of the question? Oh, yeah. What, what was your... Hold on. I have to find it now. Sorry. Oh, yeah. What was your... Yes. What was your greatest accomplishment and how are you going to build upon it? Oh. In city council. Well, I've said what I'm going to do. I, it's, it's, it's a new day when I'm mayor and we're going to move forward. We're going to move the city forward. So the past... I have not been on the council for four years now, so I'm, I'm approaching the issues that we have today and the issues that we will face in the future, and those are in my, on my radar scope to, uh, to fix. Okay, this is for Mr. LaRocco. It says, you ran for mayor as a Democrat eight years ago, and then you disappeared. Now you're re-emerged and you're running as independent. Why should the residents believe you are in it for them and that you would stay the course? Well, it's simple. I keep my word, unlike a lot of people. You know, the Constitution allows you to run for office under any party you want to. I was called by several people, several hundred people, and they wanted a choice. They didn't feel like they had a choice. And so I'm giving Michigan City a choice. And it's up to you. If you choose to exercise that choice, that's terrific. If not, I can go back to enjoy my retirement. For me, it's a win-win situation either way. Okay, so I'm going to revive one more question that we've used before. And uh, how will you work with redevelopment to include the double track, market mall, and infrastructure in the future of our city? Okay, the, the problem, like I already mentioned with the double track, is we don't know what the cost is going to be yet. You know, we have to ensure that the people on the west side get their fair share for their properties. And the other thing, you talk about affordable housing, we're going to need a little bit more when all these people on the west side get displaced. And it's never a good idea to separate a town like this. I wasn't in favor of the two-track system. I'm stuck with the new track system when I get to be mayor, and we'll have to make the best situation out of it. What we'll have to do is maybe hire an engineer 
to make sure that the work is getting done according to the plan and we don't get shortchanged and things get changed not in our favor. Okay, Mr. Perry, we'll ask you the same question. How will you work with redevelopment, including the double track, Marquette Mall, and infrastructure? Well, as I said, I'm going to uh, dissolve the Redevelopment Commission and close the TIF pro program. California, who created the TIF in the, gen in the redevelopment concept, they've outlawed it. You can look it up on the Internet. They found it doesn't work. Indiana, downstate, they're not happy with it anymore because of communities like Carmel, Fort Wayne, and Michigan City who have not used the money as originally intended or sit on enormous amounts of money like we've seen. Now, as far as the double track goes, all you got to do is research it. It's not going to happen for four or five more years. The current Department of Transportation report that they submitted to the Congress in March does not have double track even on it. The Westlake Corridor is, is on it for review. First, you've got to get on that, and they submit the report once a year. So when people say that, oh, it's imminent, any time now, we're going to see double track. It's not going to happen. Okay, thank you. Mayor Mir. how will you work with redevelopment, including the double track, Marquette Mall, and infrastructure? Well, first of all, it's proven that for the last three years, I've worked uh, with NICD uh, and the Redevelopment Commission team here in Michigan City, which includes uh, uh, the attorneys. And so as the double track plan through Michigan City has been uh, progressing, we have been at the table to be concerned with what streets would be closed, how the grade crossings, uh, something that gets missed, that all of our grade crossings are going to be brought up to safety standards. Many times now, you cross the tracks and it's a stop sign. Uh, the other thing that I would mention is the governor of the state of Indiana, Eric Holcomb, had confidence enough with my leadership to put me on the NICTI board to make sure that this is uh, seen through properly in Michigan City and through no throughout Northwest Indiana. Thank you. And Mr. Carnes, how will you work with redevelopment, including the double track, market mall, and infrastructure? Uh, it's, it's very interesting. Um, as time goes on, um, if you look back to 2015, uh, Mayor Mir had some very different views on the double tracking, and he's totally changed. I don't know if it's because he's on the NICD board, but he's totally came away from those views. To me, I believe when he was for the people, he had a different view. And now that has changed. But like I said, I hate to be a broken record, but it's, it's cosmetics. You know, we, we've got some serious issues. And when I go out into the neighborhoods and I'm talking to people, they're not talking about the double track. And they're talking about how I'm going to pay for my prescriptions because I'm retired. I have Social Security and my medication has gone up. How am I going to pay for that? Uh, we have uh, a group of people that we call the working poor. 75% uh, of our, our, our workforce is retail. Uh, those people work hard and, and they get paid little or nothing. We have workers, our city workers are barely making uh, over minimum wage. So those are the things that we need to deal with first. Um, to heal this city, we need to do those things. Okay, thank you. So thank you. now you will have a one-minute summary, and we'll, if you can just continue, Mr. Carnes, like your, your thoughts, you can finish them up in one minute. Thank you. Thank you. First, I would like to thank all of you for coming out to this forum. My name is Damon Carnes, and I would love the opportunity to be the mayor of Michigan City. Why I grew up here, I, w I raised my children here, and make no mistake, I love this city. But time has come for greatly needed change. As your mayor, I will serve you with integrity and honesty. After all, you deserve that much. Under the current administration, as you have seen demonstrated this evening, there is too many inconsistencies, lies, and smoke screens. I will hire a new police chief. I will create a citizen's review board, making all rank and file officer officers accountable, including the chief and the assistant, removing the dark cloud that is over Michigan City. My new chief will have a working relationship with the county prosecutor. As your mayor, uh, you will come first not the biggest donors of the mayor's campaigns. Thank you. Mr. Muir? Yes, good evening once again, everyone. And uh, I would start out by saying the progression over the last eight years in the city of Michigan City is undeniable. 
many of the suggestions, ideas, and concepts that you heard from the city council uh, candidates and also the mayoral candidates are already happening. Just because they are not willing to talk about partnerships with redevelopment and economic development corporation and job training opportunities. These are all the things that help those social ills that are facing not just Michigan City, but are facing communities across Northwest Indiana and the United States of America. These are social ills that we send our police officers in to deal with each and every day. Because when everything else fails, when people in our community that are so-called leaders and have uh, community centers that don't even offer anything to the community, uh, the police officer is the one who's sent in to deal with these social issues. So if you want to keep the progression going in Michigan City and job opportunities for the future, vote for Mayor Ron Muir on November 5th. Thank you. Um, Mr. Mr. Sorry. Mr. Perry. Okay. I've told you what I'm going to do if you elect me mayor. Now I'm going to tell you what I will not do. I won't allow a 35% sanitary rate increase to be passed on to, in a city where 7 out of 10 residents are low income and 1 out of 4 live in poverty. I will not try to pass an annual property ownership fee that's paid annually at the rate of $143 per homeowner per year, $428 per church, school, apartment buildings, $1,000 per manufacturing facility and this is per parcel of land if there are more than one parcel they pay more I will not spend your property tax money on anything that doesn't benefit us the people of Michigan City and I will not conceal a diesel fuel spill that occurred July 21st and not say anything about it till September as I've said on the radio Michigan City is my home and its people are my family I will protect you and your safety even if I lose my job doing it Thank you. And Mr. LaRocco? Michigan City has always been diverse. We've had different neighborhoods, different people ever since Michigan City has been founded. What we have to do is bring everybody together. We're all on this boat. We're all trying to take the same journey. You know, we need to work as a community and make sure that our neighborhoods are taken care of. We can talk about all these abstract numbers about billions of dollars worth of development. Tell that to the lady in my neighborhood who's been trying for a year and a half to get her streetlight fixed. Tell that to the people that haven't had their brush cut along the road. Tell that to the people whose basements still flood regardless of how much money you want to say you spent. So let's get real. Let's take care of the citizens of Michigan City first, and I guarantee you I'll do that. All right, thank you, candidates, and I think we, they deserve a round of applause. Thank you, everyone, for coming out, and please check out the candidates' answers on Vote 411. Thank you very much. Good night.